Welcome back to the channel. I am Caleb Ray. This is Measure Once Cut Twice. This cosmos we are in right now. It's Measure Once Cut Twice universe, and you are watching Measure Once Cut Twice. We are going to be stealing something from the Amish. As bad as that sounds, it is a drying rack designed for hanging clothes on, for hanging towels on, for hanging sheets on, for hanging your socks on, whatever you want to do with it. It's a very, very cool design. They're really, really fun to make from a woodworking standpoint. We're going to make one today. We're going to make a rough cut lumber. Level up. Yeah. Now I could just show you a picture, but I'm not going to just do that. All right, it looks like this. These are pieces like this, and there are dowels on these corners. The dowels are four feet long. They run in between an identical frame on the other side, and that's how the whole thing works. These dowels hold it together. They also are what you put your drying stuff on, and they're also allowed to fold up. Very, very simple design. Really, really cool. Don't mind the truck parts there. That's normal. And this is the most confusing tape measure on the planet. Look at how small the foot marks are. Look at the marks in between. Under 14, there's a 7. Under 15, there's a 7 and a half. Under 16, there's an 8. It's half of whatever length you're at. Under 17 and a quarter, there's an 8 and 5 eighths. It's showing you what half of that length is in case you need to find center. It's a really cool idea. It's just really complicated to use if you aren't doing that. Anyway, something cool I thought you've probably never seen before. So we're gonna cut these at 32 inches. I believe they need to be 30 inches long at the end. Maybe we'll go to 33, just to make sure we have enough. So pieces 10 and a half inches wide. They're an inch and a half inches wide. An inch and a half wide. Give it three and a half inches. Seven, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six out of that. And I need one, two, three, four, seven, I think, per side. Okay, three sections, that should be plenty. Speaking of homage, if I put on some suspenders, a white shirt, and a hat, I would look pretty Amish. Radio arm saw. Simply the best saw in the world, right here. Because I really want to look like a dad, I'm going to put on the earmuffs. I'm also going to put on some sneakers and big white socks. Because we are in the roughing out phases, we're going to cut just a hair bit, maybe a sixteenth or less, over an inch and a half wide, which is how much it's supposed to be in the end. Dad muffs on. Vacuum. <laughs> table saw here and the bench here, you get this. Dropping, because you don't want to reach around and grab these things. What do you do? I'm gonna move the table saw over and we're gonna have a connection. I don't want to go any further than that because the power cord comes out of the floor. So I think we leave right here for now and see how I like it. And that's really annoying me, so we're gonna clean that. Now this looks like way too much wood, but you have to remember that it is. This is 18 pieces. I only need 14. We've got one here, here, and there, and this one will be split in half. That is roughly what it will look like. Okay, let's start planning. Get these things down to the right thickness. Wow. Once we get the length right, then we can also do the hole drilling. We're gonna check for straightness. Because you don't want it to be too crazy off. Pretty good, mostly. Joint these two straighter, and then we're gonna plane them, and they'll be fine. And that poor B. The main pieces are exactly 30 inches long. We're gonna begin laying it out. Three quarters of an inch. I know you're not supposed to scribe with calipers and supposedly, you know, machinists will writhe in pain when you do it, but it can't be that bad. And we have the vacuum because the vacuum does. So I'm gonna put on the mask. Though, really, we have a door open over there, and we also have two giant doors open over there, so it's probably not gonna be that much dust, really. Huh, now they're much closer to an inch and a half wide. We can describe our lines, and that looks pretty good. Can't really see it, but seeing is never thing, you know. Not perfect. It doesn't really matter. Good bit of leeway in this kind of construction. 
square it on the end. Run it over. Three quarter inch dowels, so many three quarter inch holes. And last time I had to um, sand down the dowels quite a bit to make them actually fit. Let's go. Okay, I'm wearing earplugs and I'm not gonna take them off for you. So these are the pieces. They look beautiful, they look wonderful, they're amazing. Now we're gonna route all the edges and then we are actually ready for assembly, which is crazy that that is true, but it is true. I don't have dowels and it is already five something. So um, I'm gonna do the routing and then I'm gonna start working on my truck out there. Cause I wanna do that. And another th cool thing about doing rough cut and not having to go three quarters of an inch thick, three quarters of an inch thick is it's thicker. So going when on the side like this, which I did last time, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot more safe. There's car junk literally everywhere right now and I am absolutely filthy. But I don't really care. I'm going to start working on the drying rack again, and you're going to watch, and it's going to be amazing. we got the parts already, of course. You've already seen that. I've just got a bunch of dowels among the brake calipers and the impact wrenches. And right now, we're going to keep working on it. One thing I forgot to do before is make the little slot here. Just going to come off here like that. Bars can slide. The other bar can slide into there, and that's how the whole thing actually gets held together. So I'm going to cut one out, and then I'm going to cut the other one, marking it from this one. That looks pretty good. It should be a little bit wider at the end. It's not very complicated. And we're gonna use a bandsaw because I'm lazy. Okay, these are sanded to hopefully perfection, though I doubt it. And now we're gonna take to the ends and sand them. I'm wearing a glove because my hand was so dirty from doing all my mechanic stuff that you couldn't really get it clean. So a little bit of our marks there. So we're gonna take the sandpaper, clean all that stuff up, and there's a humongous amount of tear out on some of these pieces. But guess what? It doesn't matter. Not even a little bit because we, these pieces are all going to have a joint like this and you're not gonna be able to see anything when they're like that. It's really boring, so I'm not gonna show you very much of it at all. Now that all the wood's done, all the sanding's done, Everything is done except for oiling and assembling. I'm going to oil this stuff before I put it together. I think it's going to be a lot easier than doing it after, like I did last time. This is why I love these latex gloves so much. We are using mineral oil, which is the only natural oil that does not go rancid. And it's also food safe entirely, so that's pretty cool. And it doesn't need to be food safe to be on a drying rack. But, you know, you're putting clothes on it, whatever, going against your skin, you got to be careful. Just be on the safe side, and we're going to use mineral oil. Man, I got dirt on again. Just wash my hands so I wouldn't get dirt on it. Still dirt. That's why I'm a woodworker and not a mechanic. There they are. They are done. Actually, this is the last thing I'm going to do them besides putting them together with the dowels I haven't cut out yet. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. So goodbye until tomorrow morning. Now I'm going to cut all these doors. Ugh, dowels, not doors. Down to exactly four feet long. If I can. They usually give it like a half inch. Extra, it varies, but um, these are exactly four feet long. This is gonna be 47 and a half inches long, then. Yeah, these are like dead on four feet. Good tight fit, but not so tight that you beat them in there like last time. This is too complicated for my little brain. Just all these have the chippage down. These should have the chip up. I said this whole thing is simple. This part is a little bit complicated. 
pulling stickers off <laughs> and also assembling. Hopefully these will come off way better than last time. I hope so. A little sticky, but if we don't touch it, it'll look fine. This is where I wish I had some Type 1 too. This would be a perfect place to use Type 1 2, which is water resistant but not waterproof. But, you know, it's a drying rack, so it may get some moisture on it occasionally. So, Type 1 1 might be a little bit underpowered, but Type 1 3 would be overkill. Anyway, I'm gonna use Type 1 1. It'll probably never get wet. Hopefully, it never will. And we'll be fine. So, we're gonna stick the dowel through it, because it's on the inside. It doesn't have glue. It, sh it can't have glue, actually. And this dowel needs to be actually the thickness of one of these boards narrower because it doesn't have another board to go through so actually does it if this is like this make them the same so it would be the inside so it needs to be two thicknesses narrower there and there we'll mark it with a knife that is the thickness of this piece because this piece is not going to have another connection on the bottom okay this is a very special piece so we're going to put it in right now glue on the shaft we can afford to get a little bit of glue on the outside. You don't need much because it's a very small joint. Flush, good, terrific. It's our first joint in. I'm happy about the amount of glue in that. I don't think that's going to be moving. But we'll also pop a nail on the bottom. Just so if the, glue, the joint breaks, it will go through. I know the purists are crying, but I don't care. Well, that needs to go through. All right, and we put glue on this. So it's nice and loose in that hole, which is good. No, I'm not spreading it out because I don't need to. Let's actually pop a nail on that one. That shot straight through. That stinks. There were some two inch nails left in there. I hate it when that happens. Yep, there's one more. Well, I've got that one off and trim it, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. Another dowel. There's so much dust on this bench. Now it's starting to look like a drying rack. As you're working, just keep thinking about how this thing's going to work and make sure you're doing everything right. I figured this one out from a picture when I was like 14 when I made the first one. I mean, I'm not much older than that now, but anyway. What I'm saying is it's not that complicated. If you just think about it, you can figure it out in your head what this needs to look like to work. And it's really fun to do that. So this one's full length on the outside piece in the bottom. This, let's do two at once. Let's do three at once. All three of these. Very helpful to have a bench this big. But if you don't have one, get uh, saw horses and a piece of plywood would work, or even just the floor. I've used I used the floor the first time I made one of these. That's pretty cool. Oh shit! All over it. In we go. One, two, three. Scissor action. So cool. This one's really clean, but chip side down. I forgot to put on that guy. Anyway, that's fine. I can still do it, but I, I'm gonna put on both. Cause that's very important. Make sure you put this one on, on your middle one. That's where it's supposed to go. This. Ah, the fan over there. And if it gets a little bit of glue on this other piece, it'll break free. Don't worry about getting too much glue on this guy, the loose one or your movement part. I should come up with a name for that. It probably has one. This is probably like an ancient business tradition thing that I'm just interloping on. It's loose, it's loose. Oh, they're really close to squares now. The idea is to make it perfect square. I need to figure out how long that's going to be. Four lengths less. Four of these. Wash it up. So that is what we need to cut this thing length to. As long as you know all your board thicknesses are consistent, this will work perfectly. So I'm gonna cut the three that go in there. These will be tacked from the bottom because again, we're always thinking about visibility for the nails. It is the bottom, right? Yeah, that's the bottom. It should be. Don't do what I did and just drill the hole in the center. Drill it a little bit off center so I have at least a half inch of wood there. It's probably not too but bad of a weak spot. And also make sure you have like an inch off the end. About 21 inches from the end here to the center of this hole. From the end to the center of the hole. That's probably going to help somebody. All right. Amazing to me how complicated this looks. Easier. Works out the way I want it to. About the thickness of the pieces. Awesome. This one has to be on before that one's on. I 
fake through it. Everything's gonna work. There's a little bit of noise in the background, but don't worry about that. If you were an old timer and you've been watching this channel for a long, long time, you probably remember where I'm standing. Look at this. Can you see this? This is where I started. This is the first workbench I've ever used. Really, really cool to actually be back in here. It's super weird to be filming in this garage. Been a long time, probably seven, eight months since I had done this before. The drying rack is gone. It is to the person that I made it for. I didn't film any kind of outro. I didn't film a closing montage. I didn't film anything else besides what you saw already. It turned out really well. The squeaking did completely go away. It doesn't squeak like at all anymore. I waxed the drawers a little bit. Now it's great. Works perfectly. They love it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.